Brittany, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Well, many have deemed you as a breakout star, uh, one of the breakout stars of the documentary. How has life changed since the airing of Last Chance You? Um, you know, my day-to-day -day life is probably very similar. I mean, not much has changed just with the day-to-day -day life. I still work here at East Mississippi, um, you know, raising my daughter and just doing the normal things that we've always done. I think the difference is that a lot of more people care about it now than ever have. So just, you know, the Twitter followers, Instagram followers, just the fans, the emails that I get, um, being pulled in a, in a couple different directions maybe with media interviews and appearances, speaking engagements, things like that. Um, but my day-to-day -day is pretty much the same. I got you. And so something that I'm, I'm interested in knowing is, do you feel the athletes and the community college athletic culture as a whole were represented appropriately in the documentary? Yeah, I do. I mean, I feel like they did a really good job of just portraying exactly what happened. Um, there were no scripts. I, I never felt pressured to, to do something a certain way or, you know, plot lines weren't induced. I felt like they were just here capturing junior college athletics and how our year went at East Mississippi. And I do feel like it was a very accurate portrayal. And, and something, too, you, you've previously mentioned uh, a pretty progressive idea of providing sports as a major at uh, colleges and universities. Could you give us a little more insight as to that and how you came up with this idea? You know, I just think it's, honestly, I kind of feel like we're just behind in, in curriculum. And, um, you know, I feel like it's kind of common sense. I mean, the, in every other degree program in, or in every other career field, Students are able to major in that career field and really learn the ins and outs of what it is that they want to do. Um, and, and I feel like we provide that in every other outlet except for in sports. And, and we make athletes who just want to excel in their, in their athletic performance and who are going to make that a career, we make them choose something else. And, I, you know, I feel like that's where the disconnect comes in between the athlete and their education is they're being forced to major in something and being forced to quote unquote care about something that they really don't care about. You know, they care about their athletic performance. They care about excel excelling in their sport, their bodies and how their bodies operate within that sport. Um, and I feel like we should maybe focus on allowing them to do that and let's set them up for that small percentage of athletes that do excel and that do have a future playing at the next level, whether it is in the NFL, NBA, or overseas in Canada or with the D-League with basketball or minor league baseball. I mean, these, there, there are guys and, and women that, that do this, that play their sport for a very long time, maybe not in the NFL or NBA or, or in that arena, but they're playing it at a lower level and making money and being successful. But we won't allow them to major in that. We won't allow them to learn how to handle their finances or learn about um, – being a professional athlete and I, and I feel like you know we should be revisit that and allow these athletes to really study what it is that they want to do and again we're here with Brittany Wagner who's the athletic advisor for the East Mississippi Community College Lions and again one of the stars of the Netflix documentary Last Chance You and uh, Brittany what would you consider is the most important aspect of your job um, you know, I think the most important aspect of being an academic counselor is just knowing your clients. I mean, knowing who you're working with. And you, they're not all the same. You can't treat them all the same. Um, you know, it, it's, not a, it's not a factory. It's not a football meal. And I feel like sometimes in this job you can get bogged down with that, just your sheer numbers and how many people you're supposed to be helping. You can get bogged down with the paperwork and, you know, covering your own self. Rather than looking at them as human beings, look, realizing the experiences and the, the difficulties that they've gone through in their life, uh, meeting them where they're at and growing them from there, not, uh, not expecting them to come in where you want them to come in, you know, or act how you want them to act and then grow them from, from that point, but just allowing them to come in as they are and then bettering them from, from that point. I really feel like that is where we've lost. I feel like, you know, academic counselors have kind of lost that ability and there's so much paperwork and so many rules and so much documentation that has to be done in our job that sometimes we lose sight of the fact that we are, we are working with human beings. I got you. So that'll kind of lead us into our next question, somewhat of a twofold question. What would you consider the most rewarding part of the position and the most challenging? 
Yeah, and I think that the fact that we're working with human yeah. beings um, <laughs> is the most rewarding and also the most challenging. Um, you know, obviously the most rewarding is just to see them succeed. And, you know, I think the definition of success is, it varies. You know, there certainly those players that go on to play at the next level and play in the NFL, I mean, certainly, you know, I, that is a feel-good moment, and I love watching them on Saturdays and Sundays. But I feel like I've had more players that have been successful in other areas than, than I have that have gone to the NFL. Um, you know, when they, sometimes when they just pass that class or when they make an A on that paper for the first time, that's a success. Um, you know, I have a lot of athletes that have graduated and gone on to do other things, and that those are very successful moments as well. So those are certainly the high points. I mean, the low points of the job are obviously it's just it's stressful. Um, it's a lot for one person to do, especially here, having 200 athletes to one person, um, and then having, you know, the team, that we, the football team that we have and the success that they've had, knowing that this is kind of the last chance and that these guys are depending on me to help them get there. I mean, it, it is a lot, and you're dealing with a lot of different personalities. Um, for me, sometimes the players are a lot easier to deal with than the coaches. Um, and so it's just it's just a balancing act, and, and you know, the day-to-day -day sometimes can be pretty stressful. And the, the reputation of the, of the Lions prior to the documentary was pretty solidified anyway, but post-documentary, what has this done for the brand of EMCC? Oh, I think, I mean, I don't even think we're really seeing the full benefit of this yet for East Mississippi. I mean, I think we're a household name now, not only in the United States, but all over the world. Um, this past weekend at Homecoming, we had our largest crowd ever. We sold out and had standing room only. Um, it was I've never seen an atmosphere like that here. And we had fans from London, England, um, that had were, had come, you know, made their entire vacation around coming to Scuba to this game. Um, there were fans from all over that, that I met, and I know I didn't even meet most of them. But, you know, to have that, um, to have people loving our players and following our players. And, um, I mean, it, I think that, you know, this tiny little town of Scuba and East Mississippi Community College will forever be changed because of Last Chance U. Absolutely. And, and to anybody who's watched the documentary and knows that you looked like a natural on the screen, uh, has this created any type of uh, aspirations to do any acting? <laughs> you know, it's funny. Like, some people have asked, if I was real, because I think they thought that everything else was real and that I was an actress. Um, I'm not, and I've never acted before other than, like, a high school play. So, <laughs> I, you know, I don't know. I mean, I'm open to all possibilities. I don't I don't know that I never in a million years dreamed that that would be a possibility. Um, but I'm certainly open to wherever life takes me from this point. Yeah, and before we wrap things up, we're, we're in the heart of, of – SEC country here and Auburn and Alabama in particular are usually going to dominate the conversation and one of the the players that you had the opportunity to advise was John Franklin III and obviously you had the opportunity when Auburn traveled to Mississippi State to catch up with him so uh, first off could you give us a little insight too as to the actual person that he is because I think he caught a lot of flack for just some of the things that were seen on the documentary that don't necessarily represent him as a person and two you know what was it like to be able to see him again? Yeah, I think that you're right. I mean, I, I feel like the I, I felt like it immediately after watching the show myself. I felt like the one person that maybe wasn't portrayed quite accurately was John. Um, you know, he he is a very confident kid. I mean, he's confident in his abilities. He's confident in who he is as a person. Um, you know, I think his parents were very deliberate in raising someone like that. That was confident in who he was. Um, and, and I don't think he should apologize for that. I mean, I think certainly, too, as an SEC quarterback, you know, you should have some cockiness and confidence about you. Um, you've got to keep your head held high and really be able to withstand all types of um, criticism. So I certainly, you know, I, I feel I hate that people felt like he came off as disrespectful to me because I never felt like John Franklin was ever being disrespectful to me. I think that we just had a relationship where we both felt comfortable being open and honest with each other. And he felt comfortable, you know, having a real conversation with me. And he wasn't, you know, he didn't sit in here and just say, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am, to everything I said. If he disagreed with me, then he spoke his mind. And I think that's okay. I mean, I think that's part of learning and growing into who you are. And 
I do think that there were moments where maybe you didn't see it on the film, but when he would go back to his room, maybe he would think about some of the things that I said a little more closely. And, um, you know, John and I have a great relationship. That relationship has been maintained since he left. And I don't think, I think the world's getting it wrong if they're, if they're thinking that John isn't, isn't a great guy. Um, seeing him at Mississippi State was fantastic. It was the first time I'd seen him. So happy to see him and just see that he's happy. Um, that smile lights up a room. So to see that and his family was there to get to see them and meet his girlfriend. And I mean, that it was a great day. Um, he also was here this past Saturday for our homecoming game. He came back and he was standing on the sidelines for that. So again, that was fun too to get to see him taking pictures and signing autographs and the last chance you fans, you know, finally connecting with him. It was fun to see that as well. And he's doing great and I couldn't be prouder of him. All right, well, before we wrap things up, your Mississippi State Bulldogs, two and four after last week's loss to BYU, going on the road to Kentucky this week. Uh, what are your thoughts on the season and kind of the, the, the direction of the program as a whole? Yeah, I'm really disappointed. Um, I think all Mississippi State fans are really disappointed. I mean, I think, you know, when you lose a player like Dak Prescott, obviously, you know, you, you expect there to be a, some drop-off and, a little some issues there, but I don't think that any Mississippi State fan expected it to be like this. I certainly think there are a lot of problems much deeper than a quarterback. So, got some things to fix. You know, I have <laughs> I have been picking Mississippi State every week, and they are killing my picks. So, I honestly think I'm going to go with Kentucky this week. I mean, I just don't know. Uh, Mississippi State is just not looking good on either side of the ball. Um, Kentucky, I feel like it's got a little fight in them. I've been to, I went to a Kentucky game, the first game of the year, and their fans, you know, are, are wanting a big win, and their fans, I think, are still rallying behind them. So, I don't know. I think I'm going to have to go with Kentucky and probably going to make every Mississippi State fan mad on that one, but we're just not looking too good. <laughs> Got you. Well, Brittany, we thoroughly appreciate you joining us here on Sports Blitz, and uh, we are congratulatory of you on the success of, of the program, and hopefully this transitions into something else, and if nothing else, we'll just be able to follow you and, and the uh, lines and see what else you guys are able to accomplish. That's right. Thank you so much. We're filming season two now, so um, you'll at least get to see me one more time on season two, which hopefully will come out this summer, so we're excited about that as well. That's Brittany Wagner, the athletic advisor for the East Mississippi Community College Lions and again one of the stars of the Netflix documentary Last Chance You. We'll take another break and when we return, Brett and Luke will be right back.